So why, why do we need, what is Rhodococcus? Rhodococcus is a bacterium that lives inside macrophages, which is, are the most important defenses of, of the foal against infection. We need a vaccine because the current approaches to control which use antibiotics are, are expensive uh, and very inconvenient. So we need a, a, an easier and better way to control the infection. Why, why don't we have a vaccine already? People have tried for many years, but the, it, it's difficult to make this type of vaccine because of the nature of the bacteria and the fact that it lives inside phagocytic cells, which are the, sort of the key defense of the, uh, of the foal. And uh, it's taken people, I think, a long time to actually understand the bacterium and how it works. Yes, we, we believe it will be quite possible to make a vaccine for rhodococcus, particularly now we understand what's important for the bacterium itself and what's important for the foal. We know that we can vaccinate foals if we give the bacterium by mouth, but, which are live but virulent. So we, we know that that will immunize, but because we can't use live virulent bacteria, we think that if we weaken the bacterium in some way, um, then we can, we can make a vaccine based on a, a weakened or crippled form of the organism. What, what do you think, Ian? Uh, um, I think regarding a, the possibility of making a vaccine is the fact that for the first time um, we have the uh, accessibility of the entire genome sequence and the amount of uh, research that's being done into it at the moment um, seems to s suddenly open the floodgates and into our understanding of rhodococcus. And I think we're at a turning point where, you know, we're going to be able to identify how it's actually causing the infection and actually, you know, figuring out a way to stop that. And that's where the vaccine would come in. Yes, the the uh, in the last two or three years, we now have the full genome sequence of the bacterium. In other words, as Ian said, we have the, the blueprint of the organism. We know how it, how it causes disease. We, we know everything about the organism, at least at, at the genetic level. So this, as Ian says, has been a, a huge breakthrough for us. It's, it's a real paradigm shift in understanding and, and in the potential to uh, change this organism and to target new um, genes so that we can weaken this bacterium to make the vaccine that we think will work. A genome is, is all the genes of a bacterium in, in, the, in the way that for people the, the human genome are all the genes that you have in your body. And not, uh, it's, it, and not only kind of all the genes, but it's an annotation, it's a description of all the genes that you have and therefore the everything that controls you, at least genetically. An annotation is looking at the genes and assign, trying to and assign, a, assign a function for them, trying to say this gene uh, is responsible for making carbohydrate, this gene is responsible for making this enzyme, and so on. It's a very complex uh, process, um, although it gets easier as more and more people uh, work in the area of genomics. Why, why is genomic approach better than other approaches? I think because you see the whole picture. You, you see everything. You, you see the complete uh, genetic blueprint of what makes this organism a pathogen, what it needs to live, uh, how it works. So uh, we have a, a much more complete understanding than we did even so three or four years ago of, of this organism. Well, I, I think the past research was, was, was good um, for, for its time, but I think this, this sort of allows us to kind of leapfrog in, in understanding. And some of the work that Ian has been doing in, in Edinburgh involves what's, what's called microarrays, where he's able to print every gene, all the 5,000 genes of this organism, onto a slide, and then look at the exp their expression on the different conditions, look at how these different genes are linked to each other when the organism gets inside a, a macrophage. So it, it provides a, a level of understanding that, that is really quite extraordinary. It's, it's almost, uh, also, almost like doing science fiction. Not, not quite, but it's almost science fiction in, in the sense of, of what we can now do in manipulating this organism. I mean, this is an international project. Um, 
Rhodococcus has a very large sort of community of, of scholars internationally who work on different aspects of it. Um, Jose Vasquez Boland and his group at Edinburgh have uh, tremendous experience in pathogenomics in working with related bacteria, particularly a bacterium called Listeria, which is uh, another bacterium that lives inside cells just like uh, Rhodococcus does. So I think it's the, the breadth of, of experience and knowledge uh, both in Edinburgh, in Guelph, and in fact in other places because they're quite well networked um, with other people working in this, in this area. How, how will we manage the collaboration with Edinburgh? I mean, I know Ian uh, well because he did a Master's uh, of Science with me at Guelph. He went to Edinburgh about a year or a year and a half ago. Um, as you can see on the, the screen here, we'll manage it by communicating regularly with Ian um, through Skype. Um, I will visit um, Edinburgh once a year or so. Um, Ian can visit here if he needs to, to do any work in, in our lab. We'll have regular meetings and discussions about uh, progress and, and problems. We always like to focus on progress, but as, as often, often we have to deal with problems in order to make, make progress. And, and I think uh, we, we have a lot of experience at Guelph. Uh, we, we've, we have a lot of strains and mutants and other, other things that we've been able to send to, uh, to, send to, uh, to Ian and to uh, uh, Jose Vasquez Boland. This diagram that we have is, is a very uh, is, a, is a, a diagram of how we think the organism works. What we think is really most important in allowing this bacterium to live inside uh, macrophages, which is its home, um, to to cause disease in macrophages, to interfere with how the macrophage um, usually kills bacteria and, and make sure that it doesn't kill the bacteria. And I think it is complicated, and I, I think uh, we shouldn't apologize for it being complicated because the organism is uh, complicated. And I think it's uh, the best part of that diagram is it, for the first time, gives you a, somebody's conception of all the many different elements that go to make this organism a pathogen, and also all the many different places where you can start interfering with the organism and how it works and, and cripple it, because what we're trying to do is to, is to attenuate this organism, is to weaken it so that it won't cause disease, but it will go through a kind of a, a mild form of, of disease so that we can damage it sufficiently to allow it to produce the immun immunity that we want, but without causing disease. Yes, Rhodococcus is, is a cousin, really, of, of the bacterium that causes tuberculosis. And there's a huge amount of research going on in TB around the world now, just absolutely un unbelievable amount. And so the more we learn about Rhodococcus's equi cousin, t tuberculosis organism, the more help helpful it is to us to understand more about what Rhodococcus might be doing. So it's been a very valuable um, adjunct to the research because I mean, Rhodococcus, there's not very much money available for Rhodococcus. You know, it's a bit of an orphan as, as a bacterial pathogen, um, whereas for human tuberculosis, um, there's probably billions of dollars spent in research every year on it. Well, well I think now we have the blueprint um, of this bacterium. It allows us to, as Ian says, make hypotheses, which maybe in the past would have been just totally speculative, and, and as Ian, I think it's a nice analogy of, of going into a cave with a tiny little flashlight and, and trying to find out what's there, whereas now you just go and switch the lights on <laughs> and you see the whole cave. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a, a, a leapfrog, it's a, an exponential sort of increase in understanding mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it in, in a way that's hard, hard to explain. <laughs>